this is Ricky, and this is our presentation on sea level rise in Hampton Roads. Um, so since the 1880s, tide gauges have shown an 8-inch sea level rise worldwide, and, but in Hampton Roads, sea level has increased 18 inches since 1900 and 8.79 inches since just 1970 due to subsidence or sinking of land. Hampton Road sea level is expected to increase an additional 2.3 feet and possibly as much as 5.2 feet by 2100, with worst case scenarios showing 7.5 feet of sea level rise. Heightened sea level also increases the effects of large storms. Storm surge risk extends far into the Chesapeake Bay and up Virginia's rivers as far as Richmond and Alexandria. The National Weather Service estimates a Category 3 hurricane making landfall in the Carolinas could produce 13-foot surges as far north as Baltimore and 14 to 16-foot surges further south in the Bay. Hampton Roads is an important region to the state of Virginia and the Department of Defense, as it consists of a complex economy based off of mainly military and tourism, along with some agriculture. Due to this region's reliance on all of its parts, we decided to not single out any one section for refinement, but instead found solutions that worked throughout Hampton Roads. The military is the biggest contributor to the Hampton Roads economy, as it maintains 29 sites and provides jobs for over 200,000 active duty military members and 5,000 defense related businesses. The Department of Defense consistently invests a large amount of money in Virginia, seen in its input of $54.7 billion in 2014. Even with the extremely large investments implemented into Hampton Roads, these bases are still highly vulnerable to sea level rise and surges due to this. This is such a large concern that the Department of Defense called a whole government response and developed a committee to form ideas on limiting sea level rise. Another major factor in Hampton Roads, specific, or tourism is another major factor in Hampton Roads, specifically Virginia Beach. Coastal tourism supported jobs totaled nearly 43,500, with combined salaries totaling $875 million. Travel related expenditures reached $4.4 billion, as Hampton Roads is one of the best year round destinations. Compared to military and tourism, the amount of money contributed to the economy by agriculture is meager, but this does not mean it can just be abandoned. This aspect of Hampton Roads adds a unique identity to the area that many other regions lack, seen in this school which has a large amount of Hunga residents attending. These farming areas also attract over 280,000 agritourism visitors promoting Hampton Roads. But high, this area has high vulnerability to sea level rise due to the large amount of rivers and low-lying landscape. So there are many strategies for managing sea level rise, but we have chosen a few that would be most beneficial to the Hampton Roads region. The first and one of the most important is zoning. This consists of the separation of different regions based on specific needs of each area, which include the predicted sea level rise, the type of infrastructure currently there, and already existing regulations. This is necessary and beneficial to Hampton Roads, as it will allow for each area to receive the most effective methods of adapting to sea level rise possible. Another strategy that can be put into use is building codes and resilient designs, regulated by the government based off of flood risk. This can include any kind of flood resistance structuring, an example of which is elevated development, and this can be applied to almost all structures. There are two major federal subsidies that, if changed, could have major impact on mitigation of sea level rise in the United States. The first of these is the National Flood Insurance Program, which would be the more controversial of the two. This program, developed in 1968, provides insurance premiums for half the true market risk rate, which is crazy, and it results in more development near water than there would be normally. These premiums covered what the government paid out in claims for a number of years, but after Hurricane Katrina, the program fell $18 billion into debt, with an additional $9.7 billion for Hurricane Sandy, and this program has no way to pay off its debt. I propose this program gradually increase its rates over a period of 10 years to market rates, which is the controversial part, 
as it will decrease coastal home values and cause developers to build in safer areas. The Stafford Act is less controversial as it is only implemented when a natural disaster actually occurs. This act allows for the president to declare a disaster after a storm hits and pour federal funds into states, while it also commits federal government to pay for 75% of rebuilding. The program, the problem is that this infrastructure is usually rebuilt in the same exact way that it was destroyed. So I propose this act be modified to require that any rebuilding be done in ways that reflect the realities of climate change. Our final solution is hard and soft armoring permits. Hard armoring consists of hard engineered structures that protect against sea level rise, but this can be very dangerous to the environment. These should only be permitted for use when the importance of infrastructure is greatly outweighs the negative effects of environmental damage. Soft armoring is much more environmentally friendly as it permits organizations to rebuild or mimic natural barriers that help to reduce sea level rise, which can provide habitats for animals and reduce negative environmental impacts of sea level rise. Thank you for listening. Are there any questions?